Hello! I'm finally making another video. It has been months. Quarantine has been busy and I just haven't had as much opportunity to make videos. So I finally got around to doing um, a project that I've been meaning to do for years, literally. I actually, um, I should find it and take a picture. I have found a cover that I designed as an illustration student when I was still in college for one of these books. And it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great. But um, one of the things they say about putting together a portfolio is really it should be of the things that you really want to do and would like to be hired for. And so I have really wanted to do uh, book covers and so the the kind of books I'd want to be hired to do obviously would be kind of the kind of books that are my favorite that I love. So I've really wanted to do covers for my favorite book series. If you're not familiar with it, it's the Queen's Thief series by Megan Whalen Turner. And um, it's uh, taken till now that the, the final book is about to be released in a couple weeks. So it is right now, it is September in um, 2020. So something good is gonna come in 2020. <laughs> um, but it's just a couple weeks from release. It'll come out on October 6th. So finally, um, I just felt like it was time to, to make this project happen. That if I was gonna do this project and um, I don't get, get any like attention to it and, and have fans be engaged with it, which is a part of what I wanted, um, which I don't think is a bad thing. I would need to do it now. And um, I, I'm really glad that I did it. It's been a really fun project. And I just thought I'd kind of talk through my, my process, both artistically the process and also the thought process on um, why I did it and how I did it. So um, you, you can see so far in the video, I've been working through the first one. And I started with doing some uh, sketches and thumbnails trying to figure out how stuff would be. And at this point, I hadn't obviously done any of the other color covers. I started with the first one, moved through. So I was kind of figuring out my, my overall style and approach at the same time. And so there were some of the thumbnails that I did that I felt like would have led the whole project in a completely different direction if I had uh, stuck with them. But um, starting with the, the thumbnails, uh, if you're not familiar with what thumbnailing is, it's trying to really quickly, um, in, in a small space where you can't get too precious with the, the details, try to work out a design that's that's going to work and read clearly and, and do what you want it to. And so for all of these, I started with at least doing a few thumbnails. And uh, you could see there, and you'll see on the ones that I do, um, there's going to be three covers in, in this video that usually, oh, they're really, <laughs> first of all, they're really ugly. I'm doing like blobby stick figures. Some of them, like now it's been a couple weeks since I did this and I'm not even sure what I was thinking, which is, is the point of um, a thumbnail. It's to not be precious and just figure things out before you've committed and spent too much time um, working on something that ultimately isn't going to work because the design is, is not good. And so um, you can see that on those early thumbnails, and also you're going to see in a minute when I do it again on the Queen of Atolia um, thumbnails, the sequel, that kind of early on when there's a thumbnail that's starting to work, I, I spend a little more time on it and get a little more detail. And I can tell that's like, okay, this, this one could potentially work. And I think kind of um, unintentionally on all of these... Uh, covers that I did. There were usually three that stood out that seemed like, you know, they really could uh, work. And then either I got feedback from people on which one they liked better, or I just chose the one that I wanted to go with and um, chose that and just took it in the program and enlarged it in order to work on it a little bit more. Oh, now I'm looking at these Queen of Atolia thumbnails. There were some that I really liked, but um, I, w having done the, the Thief cover already, um, stylistically, I wanted to have things kind of follow in, in that same kind of vein. So some of these might not have worked for that anyway. So, um, 
and doing the thumbnails, you can see I'm also keeping the values really simple. I'm using 50% gray, black, and white, and just trying to find something that will read um, with simple values and try to establish silhouettes. <laughs> and at this point, <laughs> I had forgotten in the scene, somehow I'd gotten it turned around in my head who was higher on the stairs. <laughs> so I went back and checked the book. It's like, oh yeah, I was wrong. And I had to go around and uh, flip around, which I think worked better and it looked better. Um, but overall, the design of having the two people there um, and, and with the, the light coming down uh, still worked out. I actually really liked how this one came out. It was really fun to draw the, the rocks and the, the weird lighting situation. Um, but so now, I as you saw, I did all those thumbnails and I chose the one that I liked and I just enlarged it. I'm doing this in a program called Procreate on my iPad, um, which... Uh, as you can see, it, it automatically makes a, a progress video that allows you to see how things came together. And so um, I, I just enlarged the thumbnail and just drew right on top of it. There's no need to redraw things or, or, or make things more difficult. Um, and just go straight from there. And, and um, the way that I'm doing this, so I had chosen, and it really worked well, I thought, in the Thief one to work with a really limited palette that um, mostly was uh, just one color. And so I thought it would be good for the entire series to have each one have a color that would be like its main theme color and then maybe have a bit of an accent somewhere else, but um, overall be one color. And I've seen that work a lot in series covers that the, the you know, each, each book in the series um, has a different color. And so I did, you know, blue for the thief. So I chose green for Queen of Atolia, which... Um, worked thematically and also let her have the accent red dress really stand out. Um, and the way that I work is, is kind of weird. <laughs> um, a lot of people compare it for, for good reason. Uh, it looks kind of like a line cut or a wood cut. And it's a process that I developed actually not using iPad or Procreate. It's something that I did um, when working digitally on a computer. And um, I was working in a program called Adobe Illustrator with vectors. And uh, if people don't do digital art, that might not make much sense. Um, but basically, vectors is a type of uh, digital medium that works with very flat, hard-edged shapes. And so I, I used that for years, this, you know, this program, this medium that uses flat, hard-edged shapes. And, um, but... I have a, a little, a more of a traditional textured sensibility, but I really still liked working in this program, which is ironic to me just talking through it like this because it do it doesn't make any sense why I would like this really digital sort of media, but I did. It it makes a lot of sense as a way to work but digitally because it um, can never be pixelated and things like that makes it really convenient. Um, and so I I learned a way to work in this program. Um, in order to make art that appealed to my more textured sensibilities, which was um, by imitating a sort of line of cut style, like putting down one of these shapes and then cutting away from it, just using an eraser um, and leaving the kind of rough texture behind. And so though I was using this digital medium, I, I was getting these kind of textures. And so even though I'm no longer working in that program using vectors, so this is, um, this project was done in Procreate, which is a raster-based program. It's pixelated and um, all of that. I, I use the same approach and process so that it is unified with the rest of my portfolio. And so what that means, what I'm doing here is that um, I'm not painting it um, like a painter would. I'm layering it like uh, a print would be made, where each color is its own separate layer and as you see I get um, help from my kids every once in a while they like to uh, make their contributions which I appreciate anyway so each layer as you can see I, as I turn them on and off each color is on its own layer which um, I do very deliberately though it would be easier in many ways as far as just flow of the process to just have everything on one layer and just uh, do it all that way um, you can see as I've been doing these that the colors that I choose to start with aren't necessarily the ones that I end up carrying to the end. That I, I like to 
uh, fiddle with the colors and push them this way and that way in order to get it to look exactly how I want. And so having each color on its own layer means that each color can be individually um, tweaked and I can make it warmer, cooler, or, or change it and experiment um, with each separate layer without affecting the other layers. And to me, the convenience of that, um, I take advantage of it a lot. Um, to be able to do that is uh, worth the hassle of switching layers every time I want to work on a different color. Um, and so that that's essentially what I'm doing here. So I start with a thumbnail, I enlarge it, and then as I draw it and add details, I'm using a different uh, layer for each color that I'm using. And obviously since I'm doing a limited palette, that's part of why I have to do a limited palette is it would get too crazy to keep track of all those layers. But that's what uh, gives it that kind of texture and look. I'm just using a hard edged brush um, with pressure sensitivity. No fancy brushes here. I just imitate uh, a line of cut pro uh, sort of process um, and leave that texture behind. And um, that's how I've created these covers.